week three of the FTC decode season is done. And today we're going to take a look at some of the most creative robots and mechanisms that I've seen built this week that effectively turns their mechanism wheels into a tank drive system. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics since I'm for a decade now. And I've mentored multiple FTC teams to be national champions in our region. Today, we're going to take a look at a bunch of different creative things that the community have made for intakes, for indexers, for spin indexers, different lifting prototypes, as well as some pretty functional robots that have been made in the first season. These come from community submissions down below in the form, as well as some other things that I found online. So let's go take a look. The first up here, we've got a shooter design from the Cosmoboss 25679. And I quite like their design here, where they have sort of a grading section that allows them to have an adjustable different hooder or an adjustable hood and it makes it really easy for it not only to stay stiff and to be able to keep a nice constant point for that ball, uh, for that flywheel to be hitting over the ball, but it also allows them to adjust that hood pretty easily and still keep a stiff point in the back. You can almost think of it like uh, pitchforks. You see this a lot in farming to be able to have some adjustable designs like that. So this super cool design. Next up here, we've got a shooter test from FRC program 5705. It's another uh, sort of double flywheel here. And I think what's interesting about this one is where we've seen a lot of flywheel shooters that currently have a hood on them where they have a single wheel and they go along. On this design, you have one wheel on the bottom and it looks like one wheel at the top. So this is actually a double vertical flywheel as this runs through. And I think that's a really interesting way of setting up a shooter and might be worthwhile taking a look at. We've got another shooter here from Robo Peace. And they're shooting all the way back here. They've got a hooded shooter. It looks like it's somewhat adjustable running off of what seems to be a chain. But it's got quite a bit of loft on this ball. We are going to see this quite a bit of backspin that's also being applied to this ball. So it allows that ball to be able to launch itself up quite high and to have quite a bit of air time uh, as that goes. So this is a pretty awesome proof of concept that some of these hooded shooters running off a single motor can definitely shoot from that far back end. Let's take a look at Lawrence Engineering's, one of my fellow uh, Dutch teams. They've got another uh, similar hooded shooter up here. And it looks like, why I want to show this one off, is it looks like it's got some sort of gripping tape that's sitting on the back of this. Uh, I also love the showing what they're running at, as well as how much compression they have on their uh, design. I think a centimeter compression on a hood design this long is quite large. It might be better as they're currently running this piece of tape be able to add a little bit of grip on the back of their hood so that it doesn't slip as much. So having less slippage, some sort of grippy surface on the back is going to make your hood shooter likely more successful. Nice job there, Lawrence Engineering. Uh, we're going to move on to an intake here from FTC 2261. They're just running off a simple servo and they do have a, a couple pieces that are just kind of bent. And I like this intake if it could be a little bit faster, but not only is it able to compress and pick them up, it's also able to push it up a ramp and if you can't tell here it actually gets stuck on the edge of this black plastic piece so this ramp actually isn't easily allowing it to slide up but this is an intake that doesn't take up too much space and it actually is pretty effective at uh, compressing around these balls on a large point it looks like there's some sort of stiff tubing stiff surgical tubing to be able to do this so if they were to take this and have it take up the entire or front end of their robot and have some sort of different packaging on the side. I think this is a great, really effective intake that doesn't take up a ton of space and would allow you to take up quite a large bar. Uh, I've seen other teams do a similar kind of idea, but using rubber bands instead. And by doing that packaging, you could effectively make the entire front end of your robot an intake, which is quite an interesting way of doing it. Moving on to some indexers here. And this is an indexer from the top. And I think it's quite a good way of being able to pull in wheels or sorry, be able to pull in balls right from the start here. Just because I think that you can see there's just these little omni wheels running up here and two compliant wheels that are able to pull. And we can see that this thing is pretty fast to be able to pull out three in a row. Really interesting first prototype. Uh, it would be interesting to see where the uh, thrifty bot ends up taking this. Take a look at another lift design here. This lift design, as it's showing, that looks like a 20 kilogram dumbbell, so quite a heavy dumbbell. They have a scissor lift that's actually running this up. 
And the scissor lift is being powered by what looks like a go build a, a linear actuator or a lead screw. Yeah, you can see right down there in the bottom, they've got a single motor driving a lead a screw system that's able to drive this up. Now, obviously, I think when I saw this video earlier, they had a section where this whole thing kind of tipped over and uh, fell, but because it's such a, a small base for this design. But it does show the viability of a scissor lift. And for the most part, a scissor lift's pretty compact when you set it down in the bottom that you may be able to, and if they were to flip this around the other way, so this plate's on the bottom of the robot, and this is the top of the robot, this might actually be a pretty functional way of getting two robots on one base, provided that you don't have this large scissor right in the middle. So maybe if you had two on the sides, as a great prototype from Delta Robotics 9925, super cool to be seeing that. Next up, we've got a full robot here. So let's take a look at this full design. And uh, it looks like this robot has a quick intake on the front with a little compliant wheel, quite a large hopper before it gets up into its main intake shooter. But this is a great proof of concept. I already have a, a pretty functioning robot in the first three weeks. It looks like they've got a belt system that's able to drive things up. And in this video, it is showing him launching the balls quite close. But I do know, and there are sections of this video from Peyton Young, that has this robot actually shooting from further away. It's a super impressive piece. Last piece I want to show off is a really cool drivetrain from X Sergio Nova FTC, and this is a locking mechanism drive. Effectively, what it does is they have a little pin linkage in here that effectively turns their mechanism wheels into a tank drive system. So in this video, we can see that it's not capable of being pushed from the side for a little bit of defense. There's a little lock of a button, and it makes it a lot harder to push this robot from the side. And then if we look in another video from theirs, we can see that when it's not engaged, the uh, wheels struggle to get up the edge of this ramp. But when it does engage, uh, not only does it stop that sideways motion, or at least uh, severely reduce that sideways motion, but it also allows those to it also allows those wheels to get a little more friction on the ground. I think that's a really interesting way of still getting that adjustability and that high agility of a mechanism drive or holonomic drive while still allowing the robot to drive. And it looks like my guess is it's, uh, it'd be really interesting to see the cat on this, but my guess is it's just a simple expansion joint here that when they turn it on it pushes these sort of red plates onto the sides of the on wheels so they can still rotate in this direction but they're not capable of rolling on their 45 degree roller so it looks like it's just a simple lock or some sort of spinning mechanism that would bind up those 45 degree wheels it's super interesting prototype i'd love to see where they take this and how viable it is in a defense situation very, very interesting stuff. If you're looking for more resources for FTC Decode this season, you can consider joining my community as a membership down below. I've got CAD files, I have interview resources, as well as getting some one-on-one -on -one feedback from me. Otherwise, if you want to submit your idea to be able to share with the community and be featured on the FTC Fridays in the future, you can fill out the form down below. And other than that, best of luck in the next week's season on Decode.